I absolutely love the autumn and here in southwest England where I live the leaves are beginning to turn and we're getting those gorgeous warm gold colours and bright yellows and reds and orange and I absolutely love it and I thought in this week's Doodle Club I'm going to show you how to create some silver birch trees with those leaves just turning and create a little woodland scene. It's very easy to do and I really hope that you're going to enjoy it. You could use this for your journals, you could use it to create um, a card or a gift for somebody, something like that, or you can use it in your artwork. So welcome, welcome if you are new. My name is Kate Field, I'm an artist, teacher and speaker, passionate about helping people find their creative spirit. And if you have already found it, helping you to develop it a bit further, welcome back all you lovely ones who have been with me from the beginning, which is about nine months now I've been doing this channel. So yay, it's really good. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on with it. I absolutely love this time of year, as I said, and I'm always inspired by the colours. And I thought, let's do a very quick little doodle club this week because I am actually quite busy. I'm doing lots of exciting things this week. And uh, so other things have to take time. You know how it is. So we're going to create this lovely kind of silver birch effect with the little colours of the leaves coming through and a bit of light and I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's see what we're going to need. You're going to need some watercolour paper. Now this is 300 grams and so it's quite thick paper. You are going to need something quite substantial but you could use um, wallpaper lining paper. You're going to need an old kind of credit card, a bit of corrugated cardboard, and some watercolour paints. And I'm using my Paul Rubens um, Vibrant Watercolour Palette for this one, but you could use whichever you want. And then I have my little water spray and a soft brush. And that's it. So we're gonna start off by creating the barks of the tree. I'm just gonna move everything out of the way just to show you how I begin. Now, with a silver birch, I absolutely love silver birch trees. They're so, so beautiful at all times of year, but especially in the, the autumn. So I'm just gonna spray my dark colors just with a little spritzer. I'm gonna create a puddle, a little puddle here of black and blue just going to get that grey that I want, like that. It's very, very wet, like this. And I'm just going to put my credit card into, into the water. And I'm just going to make some marks. These, these are very faint to begin with. I think I'm going to have to swap this over because I want something that's going to be big enough to put my card in to create my little puddle. So uh, apologies for that. I could edit these things out, but I think it's important <laughs> that uh, you see that mistakes are inevitable. <laughs> and, <laughs> And even though I've been an artist and a teacher for a very long time, I still make mistakes. So in the puddle there. And then, yeah, that's better. So you can see I'm just making some marks in this kind of bluey black. Just like this. Putting a line down, just using my old plastic card, just putting that in like that. Just perhaps doing a few more branches. I'm not using a pencil at all. I just, and if you've never used this technique at all, just have a practice. Just get a bit of old wallpaper and have a practice. And I'm going to use my bit of cardboard 
and to tear it. Again, I'm just using the same, same colours and I'm just sort of putting in just a few marks. I'm just keeping it to this side. I'm, I'm imagining that my light, my sunshine is coming in from this side. So you just have, have a little bit like that. Now, I'm going to do a few of these because I want to leave this to dry for a little bit and then come back to it. And again, it's, it's one of those things that the more you, you do, the better you get. And you'll get different sorts of effects. Now, you could do this directly into your sketchbook if you want to. But they make lovely sort of autumn cards. You could do tiny ones and have them as elements in your art journal. You could do um, a sort of a landscape, something like that. I'm just putting putting together these these trees as if it's in a woodland like this just using the edge of the cardboard to create the texture of the trees like this just sort of putting those putting those together like that I'm just going to do one more just add a little bit more water spray into the paint. Just makes it easier to work. So I'm using the black, and the navy blue, creating it like that. Put the card in. And let's just do more lines. So have a look at the trees near to where you are. You know, as I've been telling you all, I had a fabulous time in, in Canada and the, the trees were just beginning to turn in um, Nova Scotia. Um, so I definitely want to go back um, in the autumn next year, I think. <laughs> I think that would be lovely. So I'm just sort of putting these in, putting in a few as if they're the the other branches there again my bit of cardboard if i think that's a bit too wet i'll just get a tissue just dab that like that i want to create a bit more texture then i can put that in like that and this is just the start of it of playing with creating these patterns to create the bark of the trees like that okay so you leave those to dry let me just pop them there like that i've got my three three pieces here i think these two need to have a little bit more shadow so i'm just going to move that one to one side let's just um, bring this one in Again, I've got my water spray. Just going to spray that in there and onto the paint. Just make my my brush it's a very very soft brush, not too wet. Put some black and some blue, just so we have that um, that dark dark blue, rather than just use black. And then I'm just going to use my brush. Again, I'm going to have my light coming in from this side. So the shadows are going to be on the left side of the tree as I'm looking at it. Just, just putting a, just a few little, little marks as if they're kind of the shadows, just to give it a little bit of depth. Again, I'm not putting in straight lines, just building up a little bit of shadow like that. 
few little dots again a sort of like using mark making and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my bit of cardboard again I'm just going to break it up dip that in and just use that to create some of that idea of the of the bark it works really well again sort of have a have a practice with it like this i'm sort of thinking about the the branches coming out just to like that i really like using mark making um in illustration and painting because you get interesting shapes and I think it can work really really well and these sort of marks can be made so easily Let me just do that's a few more like that just giving that idea of um just a little bit of depth now looking at it now i think it's a little bit too blue i'll wait until it dries but i'm just going to add a little bit more black to that one i'm going to leave that one over there to dry i'm going to come into this one and i'm going to do a similar thing again i've just put a little bit more black in the paint and i can just adjust adjust this so as you can't really change the watercolor it's not like acrylic which is much more forgiving and just sort of this kind of like feather type effects again just sort of keeping it all to the same side as the moment so I don't get confused <laughs> work out where your light source is because it does um, make a huge difference. Just gonna put in a little bit, just a little bit of shadow on this side. A few bits like that. Can you see what's happening now? It's just adding a little bit of depth before we start putting in the leaves. And th this is a better color. The this one is too blue, so I will go over a little bit to break up that blue there we go like that just gonna get my little bit of cardboard again and put in some marks but again I really do encourage you to play with this idea especially if this is something you haven't done before and to just Allow yourself to make the mistakes, allow yourself to experiment and try try things. If you, you know, put this in your sketchbook, you could then annotate it and explain what you did. And the more you do, the better you'll get. So I'm, I, I like how this sort of effect gives the impression of the trees in a woodland so i'm like i'm liking that one as well so i'm just going to go back to this one and i'm just going to make it a little bit darker on some of the shadowy bits let's just i like um blue shadow but I also will use some um, purples and greens when I'm doing a shadow. Try them out. See see what you th what you think. Try different um, colours. But I would advise not to just use black. Just you know, mix mix another colour into the black. Let's do this with that, and then my little bit of cardboard. that in just gives just a little bit of texture those lovely silver birch 
um, barks. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful, aren't they? So beautiful. There we are. Right, I shall leave those ones to completely dry and then we will do the leaves. So all three of these pieces are now dry. I'm just going to take one of them. And what we're going to do is to use the autumn colours on my palette. I've got my little plastic thing here. Just a little bit of water. I'm just going to spritz spritz the paint a little bit with a soft brush. Now, what I'm going to do, and this is a bit scary for some people, <laughs> but don't be scared. I'm just going to spray some water onto this, just at the top. And what I'm going to do is to get some of my orange and I'm just going to put in little dabs. And you see what happens with, with the paint. So we use, put in some yellow, just a little bit of yellow. So what you'll see is I'm not creating each individual leaf. I'm just getting this idea of the colours. I'm just popping those in. And I'm just playing around with this idea, the impression of the leaves and if you feel that it's got a little bit wet so um, like that bit there I'm just going to get a bit of tissue and I'm just going to carefully dab some of that you can't do it too wet because the um, or can't do it too roughly because it will interact with the uh, the darker colour that we put in before. But you can just put in a few little bits and you can see it will all start to kind of run in to the spaces. And we have this idea. And we can always do a little bit more. Okay, be brave with it. We're getting this idea. There we go. Just popping in those like that. I'm, I'm liking that effect. I'm thinking it's uh, that's the sort of thing that I want. This kind of like ex almost like an explosion of colour, isn't it? That's uh, going to leave that one to dry for a little bit. I'm going to pick up the next one. I'm going to do a similar sort of thing. I'm going to spray the water at the top like this, and then I'm just going to drop in some of my autumn colour paint. And each one will, will be different, which is what you want, isn't it? Because when you walk into the, the woodland, you will see this sort of mass of colour and it's difficult to actually see the individual leaves, but you get this impression. And that's really what I want to do in these little pieces, is to have this idea, the, uh, the dappled light coming through. like this. Okay, I'm liking that one. I'm just going to move that one and leave that one to dry. And let's just pick this one up now. It's going to add a bit more water to this. Spray paint at the top. Let's just start to put in some of this 
lovely, lovely colours of the autumn. Okay, so let me know what you think. What are the uh, trees doing where you live? I know that I do have quite a few of you who are actually from Australia and New Zealand. So tell me about the spring. <laughs> what? <laughs> How is the spring where you are? And uh, let me just let me know. Let's. Yeah, you know, we we can't really have a, a weather update without mentioning the uh, terrible hurricane. So, my love to all of you who are experiencing that horrendous weather you are in our thoughts you really are let me just put that there like that so i'm going to leave those to dry so i've got that one that one and that one. So all three have slightly different feel about them, which is which is what I like. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I will do a little bit more detail on that and then we'll see what we're going to do in the foreground. So I'm just going to work a bit on the foreground and just spray, spray some water here and then I'm going to mix up some sort of moss mossy green type uh, colour. So to get that, I'm mixing my, oh, let's just move that over there, this green here. So it's a very kind of vibrant green and far too vibrant to, um, to what I want. I'm adding a little bit of blue and then I'm going to add some black and this will give me my my mossy green. I might just need to spritz that a little bit more. I'm just going to put in some green in the in the bottom part of this, so it kind of comes into the foreground between the trees. Now, those of you who have watched my tutorials might be thinking, ah, she always says do the do the background first and and I do tend to do my background first but for this I wanted to have the paper come through because that is the white because it, when we use watercolours we don't use white paint um, traditionally. Sometimes you can use a gouache paint um, or even an acrylic paint if you're going to do something sort of mixed media but with, with watercolours, we tend to just use the paper as the uh, as the white bit. So again, I'm just kind of taking, lifting it, just a tissue, lifting that bit, just to have a bit of bit of green coming through there. And I want to do some blades of grass, so I'm going to dry my brush a little bit with the tissue. I'm going to choose my sort of darker green. Like this, let's just put it here so you can see. And I'm just going to use my brush really lightly just to put in some, some strokes, just to kind of give the impression of some undergrowth like that. So I know, and I will just leave that one to dry. Let's um move on to the next one. I'm going to use exactly the same technique. Water on the bottom. Put in some of my green. Use the tissue. Now you see that I'm working fast and one of the mistakes that sort of beginners make with watercolour is that they, they labour, what I call labouring it too much. And what will happen is that the paint will go muddy and the, um, the paper may well then split. Now I'm going to put a little bit of yellow here because that's kind of like the undergrowth is also turning. So again, sort of slightly different to, to the previous one. I'm going to use my tissue again just to 
I just want to add this, that idea of those leaves that have fallen off the tree already. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put tiny hints of blue to give the, the impression that uh, it's a gorgeous autumn day with a blue sky. And you only need to give this kind of a tiny hint and it will work. So I'm just going to put in just a tiny tiny little bits of blue and it will give the impression that it's a blue sky behind. You really don't need to do very much. It's uh, again, it's very much kind of less is more in a way. Just tiny, tiny little bit of blue in the background. I'm going to leave that one. And I'm just, just going to pick up my final one uh, just to show you. So it's not quite dry, but that's fine. Screw it at the bottom. Let's just put in, put in some of the green, like this tissue. Like that. And again, I'm going to put in orange in the undergrowth Let's sort of pick it up with a bit of uh, a bit of red and brown as those leaves are turning my tissue again lift some of that off the tissue itself will give a texture which is really interesting I think and I'm thinking I'm going to do some grass on here but I'm thinking that I actually want to define the trees a little bit more. So I'm going to show you how I do that next. So I've come back to this one. I want to do um, some more trees and I want to make these a little bit darker. So I'm mixing up my blue black again. And I'm going to take um, another bit of cardboard. This is quite dry. I mean, it's not totally dry, but that's that's OK. I'm just going to get this kind of a jaggedy edge going here. Put it into the paint. I just want to pick up. Just define the edges just a little bit more. It's where the um, the leaf colour went on. I kind of deadened it just a little bit and I thought, no, actually, I want a little bit more so we can go, as you can see, and I'm just going to put in another couple of trees. And it doesn't matter that the um, the yellow is still wet. That, that's fine. Let's just put in a few more. So you can see, see what's happening. It just adds a little bit more depth. A little bit more interest. I think it just needed a bit more. A few more trees just just there. And I like I like that. But I'm just going to leave that one. Let's just bring this one in. And I'm going to do something similar. It's going to go over those. those edges just a tiny bit. We're always kind of reviewing our work, we're looking at it, evaluating it, thinking, yeah, I like that bit, and that needs a bit more there, or you know, that sort of thing. And it, it's really important that we, we do this, and we can then really develop our, our skills. Take that one. I am liking that. So let's just have a look at all three. Lift that, lift that one up a little bit more, like that. Now I might um, use these to develop and create something larger, or I might just kind of leave them for a while, a couple of weeks, come back to them, perhaps rework them a little bit. And have and have them in a collection. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you are going to be doing 
in the next few days and and just I love reading your comments so thank you so much for everyone who does contribute and if you want to join the Facebook group I haven't really spoken about that yet come and join our lovely Facebook group and if you'd like to become a member of Open Studio the details are all in the description. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial and that you've got lots of ideas of things that you want to do, experiments you want to try, different mark making with your watercolours. And if you'd like to see some more, I've got a playlist here or you could watch this one. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.